Abortion greatly harms our communities, our nation, and the world. The truth must be told. and thousands of teachers, students, and faithful are pouring off buses and filling the grounds of Parliament Hill. In just a little while, members of Parliament, pro-life leaders, and prominent members of clergy will take to the stage and witness for life. We start today's coverage with highlights from pro-life masses held throughout the city. You've heard the slogan, my body, my choice, offered as the discussion ending argument. But this is a false sense of personhood God made us for relationships with him and with one another. We're just outside Notre Dame Cathedral with these great students from Mississauga. Please, tell us why you're here. We're here today to support life from conception to natural death because we believe that conception is the moment that you become a human being, not after. Excellent, excellent. And right now there actually isn't any law in Canada protecting the unborn and we really, really need to change that. We're here with Professor Meenan from Our Lady Seat of Wisdom Academy. Tell us, why is it important that people come? It's important to make a public witness in the defense of life. The Holy Father, John Paul II, said at the end of Evangelium Vitae that it's incumbent upon Catholics and all people of goodwill to stand up for the cause of life, cause of the unborn, and for all life issues from uh, conception to natural death. And so today we understand that we need to challenge the false idea that abortion is merely a private, personal decision. The truth is that abortion hurts everyone. There are lots of people here that would prefer that uh, the pro-lifers were not here. Lots of people in Parliament would prefer that we're not here, but we're not going away. And uh, we just want them to know uh, we're going to be here, and we'll see that those who won't support life will be removed in the next election. We'll do our very best to see that that happens. I'm here because I want Canada to have a bright future and with abortion that can't happen. I feel that snuffing out a human life before it's even had any chance to reveal that you know, potential and that creativity that everyone has inside of them is just, it's such a waste because you never know what that person's going to become. They could potentially deliver humankind from all of its problems and woes, but we'll never know that until we let it live it out. It's hard to believe how this generation has laws protecting, you know, Canadian geese eggs, dogs and cats from cruelty. and. There's no legislation to protect, you know, human rights. Studies of female to male birth ratios have uncovered the ugly truth that in many countries, including Canada, parents are selectively aborting female fetuses in order to have only male offspring. The UN states that sex selection in favor of boys is a symptom of pervasive social, cultural, political, and economic injustices against women and a manifest violation of women's human rights. Well, we all have a reason to be here, right? And all we all have a gift of life, and when we're put into this world, we all have something to give back as well. So when we stop that gift of life, we're also stopping the gift that is going to be given to others. Welcome to Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've been a member of Parliament for 18 years. This is one of the largest rallies I've ever seen on Parliament Hill. You are to be congratulated. I have a dream, and that's where we respect in Canada life from conception to natural death. I'm also here to say that, as with most Canadians, it does no Canadian credit that there is no law in Canada on abortion. You must continue this fight. You can see that it is only when the 70% across this country who want protection for the unborn step forward that governments will have the courage to actually deal with this issue. We treasure life. It is a gift and it is something that we need to stand up for and urge everyone with clarity and charity. We need to encourage all people to see this precious gift. Look at the multitude around you. Look at the young, look at the strong, look at your numbers. Now look at the thin, graying ranks of our opposition, which seems to have disappeared entirely. Life and family are together. If we have to save life, 
We have to save our families. Your signs tell the truth about its terrible realities, the harm that it does to women, the damage that its culture of death does to our entire society. Hold those signs high with determination. What do these record-breaking numbers mean to you? It means that the tide is turning. It means that finally Canada will have um, a voice, pro-life Canadians will have a voice with the only developed country with unrestricted abortion on demand. And it means that the Canadians are speaking up and we will have laws in the future. There's no doubt in my mind. We want to tell Parliament, look at all these people right here. We all care, right? We're coming all the way down from Brothel St. Mary Catholic High School. We care about abortion. We want it to end. We want to choose life over death. So let's talk to mom for a second. Are children a burden or a blessing? Children are a blessing. <laughs> Good I, I come from a family of 13. My husband comes from a family of 11. We have seven of our own and they're a treasure and a blessing and I can't imagine life without them. So thank you God and thank you for all the work that you do. Completely unfair destruction of the life of people who have no voice, no ability to speak out for themselves. And uh, in the past, we've always had people who uh, those in power said weren't humans and that we could do what we like to. And right now, that's uh, the unborn and in the future, I think we're gonna look back on this and we're gonna be ashamed and we're gonna think of it as a disgrace of our country and of the world. Ladies, a lot of pro-choice has been saying, where are the women in this? What do you have to say to that? Well, since 2003, Silent No More began in the US with a couple of women, Janet Morana and Georgette Forney. And uh, over the last nine years, uh, the women and men, the crowds are constantly growing. Women and men are stepping forward and getting the courage to speak about their abortion and how it affected their life adversely. All right, we're here with Kyra. Now, Kyra, this march means a lot to you, and that's why you're here. Can you tell us a little about that? My mom was really young when she had me, and all my family was telling her that she wasn't prepared, and she wasn't old enough to have me, but she went along with it anyways. Thanks, Mom. 